The people of Britain have been unbelievably generous towards illegal immigrants. We pay millions in tax for them every single day. We've given up local hotels, local housing, our public safety in some cases. We've bent over backwards for them. The people of Wethersfield know this only too well. Their town has been turned into essentially a detention centre. They took the government to court over this. Uh, they did lose. Anyway, GB News can exclusively reveal that today some of those illegal migrants decided to conduct a protest outside, blocking roads and causing chaos. The police were called and they tried to deal with it. I'm going to go over and get the thoughts of my panel on this now. It's the director of Popular Conservatives, Mark Littlewood. I've got businessman and activist Adam Brooks and author and journalist Rebecca Reid. Um, yeah, look, Mark, I'll start with you. Do you think that some illegal immigrants are a little bit ungrateful? I mean, supposedly they've... Fleed war, they've got a roof over their heads, they've got three square meals a day, and, uh, you know, they're not in the worst part of Britain, are they? Yeah, we haven't put on good enough entertainment for them. You know, the pool table's missing a ball. You might say it's that. There's one area where I do agree with them, though. and Patrick, I've sat on this sofa speaking to you about this, these sort of issues again and again and again. The time it takes to resolve it. Mm. And their key complaint here, from what I can understand, is that processing these applications is taking too long. And I think the UK needs to make it very plain to these people, where do you stand? I think the average uh, time it takes to process an asylum seeker application is now 18 months. I've sat here saying it should be three days, 18 days. So they need to be clear where they stand. Complaints about their living conditions, it's too isolated. Uh, those fall on deaf ears as far as I'm concerned. But speed is mm. important. Justice delayed is justice denied. So I think that we actually need a government that's going to say, we're going to make these decisions very quickly on whether you stay or whether you go. Here are your obligations, here are ours, but you won't be in some camp encampment for six months, eight months, 12 months. Yeah, I mean, I suppose under the current laws, as I understand them, if those people have arrived recently-ish on small boats, then they should have never uh, an ability to stay in the yeah. UK. Our because problem, they've come from safe haven. Yeah, our problem is that we can't deport them at the moment because of the laws. Well, and that's why we've got to leave the ECHR. Uh, and, and this is where we are. Adam, do, do you think that people are ungrateful? I think they're terribly ungrateful. They shouldn't be here. They're a danger to our society, many of them, as we've seen by some very high-profile cases recently of violence, of, of murder uh, and all sorts. Um, what happens is that they throw their IDs so they can't prove where they're from. They make up a story that is normally told to them by a, a charity or an organisation. They dupe our Home Office. Even if they are denied asylum in this country because of the ECHR, we are bound to look after them. They'll still be fed, they'll still be housed. Mm. We are in a position now where they can keep coming and they will not be deported. Let's just remember, Nigel Farage has been warning about this problem for almost 10 years. He was vilified. Now, look how popular that man is. He was right, he was one of the first to say it, mm. We have got a serious problem in this country, and I am scared for my children's future if they keep arriving okay. unchecked. Rebecca, what, what do you think when you see people now, you know, shouting outside uh, bases like that, doing protests there about, about their conditions? I mean, they are there at the taxpayers' expense. Sure, but I think Dave Price had a beautiful read on it. I think he was empathetic. He said, you know, I wouldn't put my dog there. It's not the right place for them to be. And I think given that he's the person who lives there and knows the area, he's probably the expert. So I don't think they're being ungrateful. And, for instance, if I found myself, you know, needing to flee the UK, I wouldn't then want to go and live on a base like that. I'd want my, I'd want my application to be processed quickly. I obviously would want to be allowed to stay where I had arrived. And then I'd want to be able to get on with rebuilding my life. And I think the good thing is we can find one common ground here, they want to be processed faster. We want to be people to be processed faster. Well, they want to be accepted but, faster. Well, That's they want to be okay. processed faster either way. And well, they don't want to be deported, do they? I, they I, won't I, be deported. I presume not, but the, one of the main reasons that people end up staying when they have an incorrect claim is because the process is badly organised mm. and a lot of the time things get through because the, pro the paperwork isn't done properly. The government okay. needs to put money and time into educated people who know what they're doing handling these claims. I, I do wonder, Mark, when you, when you see that and you think, well, actually, 
they're obviously allowed out. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are allowed out. This is the other aspect to it yeah, as well. I mean, uh, you know, it's one thing to say, oh, I don't particularly necessarily like uh, the actual roof that's over my head. I mean, there's a lot of scepticism about that to begin with, yeah. given the fact that that facility there you know, has got bed, has got food, has got a bit of entertainment. But they can clearly come and go from that place. Uh, no doubt about that. And I don't think that there should be luxuries here. I mean, I'm not trying to punish these people, but it should be at subsistence levels. But why? Uh, well, if somebody's fleeing a war-torn country... They're not fleeing a war. Put them up in the Ritz. We don't know who the... I would happily put them up in the Ritz. If okay, somebody, you pay if for somebody it then, Rebecca. We all, we, all, we all pay for it. But if yeah, somebody, but you, if not, somebody not, leaves not. Afghanistan, right. which is one of the one of the places people are coming from, yeah. I'd like them to have a really nice time when they get here because they've had a horrible well, experience. Okay, in that case, Rebecca, go and work for the tourism industry, not the asylum industry. I don't work for either. OK, but the, the, the idea that our obligation is to give these people a great time when they I arrive, just can't understand a lack of compassion. We are processing a human rights case. I would put to you, I can't be certain, because I've never v visited this RAF base, nor have I ever visited Afghanistan, but I bet this is a damn sight better than Afghanistan. Mm. But that, uh, no, no, that is, your, that is your misunderstanding. It's better than Afghanistan now, but these are people who have lives and jobs and homes right. and TV So we're offering them TV something and better than hang on, hang on, hang on. They have on, real to, lives No, 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 no. I've got to come in here because you don't know that. In the same way that this all gets bandied around a lot of the time is, well, you know, if people say that these people might be violent or they might be whatever, oh, well, you don't know that for sure. Fine, yeah, you also don't know that. What you we just don't said even that, know you don't know anything yeah, about this. We are all having a hypothetical discussion. No one in this but, room but knows where those people are from. Adam made a really good point, any of you know about, where those people about are from? the paperwork. Yeah. Right? I think we've got to be clear about what paperwork we expect from these people. And if there is a supposition that they're throwing it overboard, their claim will fail. Look, they need to establish their well, own some people do, but one lots thing of people the say. viewers need, to, they, they've got eyes, so they can see that video. There is no women and children there. These are fighting age men that have come, come across for whatever reason they've come across for, and they are gaming our system to the hilt. The reason these we are... We don't know where the, they're from. Yes, that, the you reason don't know these people are from protesting... Afghanistan. Because they're in somewhere rural. They can't go and get a cash-in-hand job, like many right. of them are promised. The interviews from the Calais jungle, they talk of Britain as El Dorado. Because Calais means, is a hideous that, place to that be. That means a country or, or a place of immense wealth. They think they are going to come here and become rich. But Adam, would you... Why haven't they brought their wives and children? Would you, if they're you, fleeing war, would I leave my wife and children in a dangerous would you situation? Not go, what, no, so you, would I would you put, not. Would you put them in a boat? No. Yes, I would. So what, you would what? put your wife and children in a boat to cross the channel when they could drown, would, when the I, alternative I not, might be to take a job, separate, make some money and send that I money home? I would not home. separate myself from my wife and children if it was a war zone or they was in a place where they could be persecuted. Do I you would think stand Rebecca there and fight. Rod, that on the, on the a cursory glance, these all appear to be men roughly between the ages. I'm trying not to deal in detention. cursory glances well, because it's a male-only detention centre. Roughly speaking, we, 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 this is the evidence before our eyes. It's a male-only detention centre, so they're all men. Right, yeah. but uh, what, what, so, what do you think of the age of them? What you, what, what, does that speak at all? I don't know how old they are, and I can't tell okay, by looking at them. And that's bad journalism to just guess. What, what, what might be persuasive to you? We don't... Know. What would be persuasive would be some actual data about who these people are, where they came from. Because if they came from Afghanistan, they have every right to be here. Well, of course they have. No, they don't. They yes, they do. I don't, I don't want them here. But we, 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 we help create the problem in Afghanistan. Neither, neither does the majority of this country want these people in, in our country. We don't know they, what they've done in the past. We don't know their views. Hardly any of them can speak did English. Did you want the Ukrainians they, here? I want them deported. But did you want the Ukrainians? The Ukrainians were mostly Ukrainians? women that were fleeing a war. But the men well, had because to stay men weren't Ukraine. allowed to leave because they had to fight. Men had to stay in Ukraine. So we was helping women and children. And I would hope why would that men we would not send deserve them back to be helped? Why wouldn't as the you help men? Okay. Right, why would are, you leave men to die? We are bang out of time. We are bang out of time on that. I will also say there is a concern clearly that things could become uh, more volatile as the uh, situation progresses.